Welcome, welcome to this Arizona real estate market update. Rick Helps Real Estate Show, trying to make sense of this crazy Arizona market. Good morning, Jackie. Good morning, Mark. Mark, I've got some interesting stuff to share with you today. But before I dive into the numbers, I want to let you know what I'm thinking. And now I don't make long-term projections, but I'm seeing some numbers and I have a real strong opinion about our spring market right now. I want to let you know um, where I think this is headed. And I want to be able to kind of put a little asterisk by my video that says this video is not intended for this update to try to get you to go out and buy a home or try to get you to list a home. Um, real estate agents only make money when real estate's going up personally. If the market's heating up, I don't view that as a very good thing in the midterm. I think if it gets too hot, uh, that we'll see some consequences that we that we won't like. We're trying to not have a hard landing, and uh, we will see what goes on with this number. Good morning, everybody. And so watching from North Macedonia. Boy, you get around, Kellogg. Um, so I want to show you some numbers and talk to you about some of the things that I'm seeing out there. And, uh, you know, the market is not dead. If uh, if you're hoping for the market to crash, um, you won't like this video. Um, if you're one of those out there saying, I'm waiting for the crash, you will find these numbers uh, disappointing. But first thing we want to do is let's start out right now and look at what rates are doing today. And right now it's green. See where it says here, plus 017. That means that this chart's going up. That means rates are coming down slightly. We're still at 6.44. But here's a chart that I wanted to share for you that's kind of new for the show here. And this is directly from our multiple listing service. And it's got a lot of different elements in it, like the absorption rate. How much are the homes being absorbed? And we're at about two and a half months. We had been in November at 2.85 months, which means if no other homes come on the market, it's going to take almost three months to absorb all the inventory. Here's the big question right here. This is inventory. This is active listings right here. See that top blue line? But then down below here, the green line is new listings. How many new listings are coming on? I track that in my seven-day moving average, as you know, which is this one. So the blue line is new listings. But new contracts are going up. So then we look at new listings here, and it's showing that they flatlined. Sold days on market. So it was 79. Today it's 76. Prices. The blue line here shows median list price. The green line shows median list price. And the brown line shows sold price. So the median list price right here is coming in at 450. Sold price coming in at 419. We can kind of dissect that a million different ways, but that's what it is. The sale to original price ratio is at 94%. So people are getting 94% of their asking price. Now, this doesn't include any concessions that they may have offered. And here's our volume. So the volume is kind of flat. If we go over to the Cromford Market Report and we see this is the big kicker right here, folks. We only have 12,838 listings on the market. Now, why do I concentrate on that? Um, where's the inventory? We get inventory every spring that shows up. Where is it? Well, it's not showing up because people are sitting on low interest rates. They don't want to sell their home and bite into a higher payment. This really shows the, uh, the picture here in that, and I'll blow it up big for you here. So you can see that this is where we're at today. This is new listings. So if you draw that out year over year here and you look at our spring market, so let's go back to 2019 in the same month, which is March, April, it'd be right here. So our new listings are way down. I know I'm giving you a lot of red lines here, but that's where we're at today. So new listings are not showing up like they used to. Until new listings start showing up, there will not be any downward pricing pressure. We'll only have upward pricing pressure. And this chart here, again, shows you the Cromford Market Index right here, the latest line on the bottom. Um, it's not going down. It's going up. And we're above 120. We're almost hitting 140. Anything over 110 is considered a um, seller's market. 
uh, around 100, 110 or below is a balanced market. Uh, Cato Kane, rates, rates, down, 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 please, please. Careful what you wish for. <laughs> Jackie, if we went back to 2009, do you know offhand what typical sales per week were compared to now? Um, boy, let me see if I can find that, Jackie. I'm not sure. I'd have to maybe kind of take another look at that. Let's see. Uh, market index. This here is, um, I'll have to dig that one up, Jackie. I'll get back to you. Um, this is what I like to concentrate on. And I looked at this yesterday and I want to show you here a little bit closer. Right there. See the red line? That's sales. They're going up, not going down. The blue line, that's inventory. It's going down. It's not going up. That means upward pricing pressure. Right here, listings under contract. Where are they going? They're going up. They're not going down. So if you're waiting for things to fly down between now and I think the end of May, you're not going to see it. Now, another little caveat that I got. I had an inspector get a hold of me yesterday. He said, I'm seeing inspection times, which are normally a 10-day period, being shortened because there's so much competition in the market now. They're not waiving inspections yet, but in multiple price offer situations, buyers are saying, I'll shorten it to five days. But we've kind of had a shakeout with inspectors because things got really bad. Some of them maybe switched careers. And so now you're trying to get a hold of your inspector and saying, hey, I need to inspect it uh, real quick, maybe in the next two days. They're book solid. So for you real estate agents out there, get with your inspectors and kind of find out what their schedule's like before you commit to a five-day inspection period because they're all getting book solid. It's an interesting turn in a short period of time. And we're starting to see that uh, things are heating up. Now we go back to the, to the feds here because we question was raised yesterday that said, you know, um, is oil going to add to our inflation? Well, this is what central bank looks at, which is PCE, personal consumption expenditures, excluding food and energy. Okay. So this is what the Fed co really concentrates on. And we're at 4.4%. So it's going down ever so slightly. Nothing's moving up too fast there. Tyler here says, I'm amazed prices are holding so well where all the average people can't afford them. Now oil set to spike again. It's going to be tough. You know, I'm surprised too. When rates went up, I thought, well, there goes the spring market. We're, we're toast now. And uh, I'm not seeing it. Uh, and we're not seeing it nationally. This isn't just a rare thing in, in Phoenix. So now we're looking at the cost of rent. Well, this could be some positive news for you here in that uh, – we're seeing developers to bring thousands of New Valley apartment units to mall redevelopment. So these malls that are getting scraped, like Paradise Valley Mall, Metro Center Mall, um, they're going to put in these large complexes like this. Thousands of more rentals are hitting the market soon. There's a huge one I'm going to show you in a minute here. It's coming to, to Gilbert. And uh, it's luxury apartments of all things. And so the neighbors at Morristown, we're not too big on this because the way they drew it up, it was looked like it was going to bring in a lot more traffic, some really high buildings. So the builders went back with another proposal that seems to be favorable, but these are going to be uh, a lot of multifamily that's coming on. And they're coming on because these uh, developers feel like the market for rentals in Arizona is still very strong. So we'll see a period when these start getting completed later this year and into 2024 where there will be higher vacancy rates because they're they've actually got way too many multifamily permits out there right now and it's gonna i think come back to bite them but we shall see so what does this mean well it means for now if you were thinking of listing your house and you're trying to figure out do i want to wait until summer uh, we can't see that far out yet because there might be some interest rate upward pressure. Hard to tell. We've said many times on here that um, um, the prognosticators like Barry Habib feel that May 10th, we're going to see another spike down in rates. But we do know that today that listing a home is, it's easy to succeed. So we know that today. We know that because the buyers are out there. We know that homes that are priced right in a certain price range are seeing multiple offers. 
and they're closing quickly. So that we know that for a fact. Buyers, what we know is the you're definitely going to have to be pre-qualified. You don't have to forego inspections. Um, you don't. You can still get some concessions from the sellers. That's going down daily. Um, you don't have to skip um, inspections. I don't want you to do that. Um, you may have to go up over the list price, but not much. So you do have a, a chance of grabbing a home out there. You're not going to be having a knockdown drag out fight on the sidewalk like we did in 2021, but expect some competition to be prepared for that. So know what you want. If you send in an offer and they push back and say, it's not good enough, get with your agent and say, let's keep me in the game. Let's talk. So have a strategy before you write your offer. Let's go in at this price. If it's not getting a lot of attention, I'm willing to go to here. And so make sure that you're mentally, you have a strategy. The buyers right now, and honestly, a lot of sellers are operating off of headlines. Multi uh, mainstream media and headlines are still saying the market's down. So the mentality out there, except for people that are out looking or actively selling or doing research, those are the ones that know what the, how the market's actually performing today. But the average person that just says today, oh, I'm going to go house looking, is going in thinking that there are bargains to be found. And I hate to disappoint you, but right now today there are not. And uh, it's surprising to me. Now, why do I say I'm worried if things heat up? Well, I'm kind of looking on the macro scale of that. If, if the market heats up too much, you know, 30% of the uh, CPI is weighed towards rent prices and house prices. 30% of that number. If that starts heating up, um, central bank's going to put a pinch on it. They're going to have to close it down. But now they're in a pinch because if they get rates much higher, they're going to create and add fuel to the banking crisis. We haven't had a pandemic before. We've never seen this much money float in the market ever. This much money get the M2 money supply. We've never seen it grow as fast as it did. They're trying to orchestrate a soft landing. This is all a grand experiment. We would like to see housing balance. I would. I would like to see us moderate and try to get into a more balanced market where things even out over time, but it doesn't appear that it's going to happen that way, especially if we heat up now. Now, if we heat up, how hard will they clamp down? Um, that's anybody's guess. I don't know. Sean says, I'm just curious if Fed's take into account the sensitivity of the Arizona market when they make these decisions. No, they look at nationally, Sean. They just, they just look at core inflation and the number that I just showed you, which was uh, uh, personal consumption expenditures. That's what they concentrate on. Sprinkled inside of that, there's a whole bunch of other data that they they look at, but they don't they don't go, oh wow, Arizona's uh, um, oh well, there's only a few million out there. Screw it. So they don't. It's not that they don't care. It's like they say, I care. I just don't care that much. Jackie says, I spoke with a buyer yesterday out of state who said, I know people need to get rid of houses. I see it on the news. I had to explain the reporting on November and December numbers. We're in a different market. That, thank you, Jackie, that illustrates exactly what we're seeing. Out of state goes, I hear Arizona's in bad shape. Well, it's not. I, mean, I just showed you all the numbers. It's not in bad shape. So if you're from out of state and you're watching this and you think you're going to fly in and get a bargain, you'll fly in and get a house. Um, you probably won't have to beat too many people up to get it. Don't expect to say, oh, I can get this for 50,000 less than list pricing because you're probably not even going to come even close. Cato says 5.5% just to get things moving. They're already moving. We're already moving without going to 5.5%. If you go back to my little handy dandy seven day moving average here and you look at that yellow line, I could probably insert a line here, but it'd take time to do it. But Follow my mouse, if you will, straight across. Look how much higher that contract volume is compared to where we've been for almost a year now. See that? That is considerably higher than where we've been. So the market is not slow. It's just not. Uh, Jackie says uh, FHA and VA are under six. Rates are good. I heard Pat quote one yesterday, I think, uh, at five. Um, he was comparing it. Somebody was offering somebody 5.35. And he said, I looked at the same 
data and I can come in at five. Um, so we're there. And uh, now if we get down in the high fours, which, man, I, I don't know, it's going to be on fire. And that's um, that's not great. So, I mean, will I sell more houses? Probably. Do I think it's good for the market? No. Not if we heat up. Not if we have bidding wars again. So, and again, that's just that's just me. That's Rick here. Rick helps saying, wow, this is good. Um, it was balanced. It's starting to go the other way. I'm just getting a little concerned that we might be showing signs again of over exuberance, as Alan Greenspan once said. And Jason says, Fed is pumping money in again. Many lenders are offering under six. Buyers are coming back while listings still far and few between everywhere, everywhere they're done. The other thing I've seen, though, is that there's a little confusion over the charts when you see the balance sheet on the Fed. Not to get too wonky here because it's not my area of expertise, but they're, they're showing that we're up like $400 billion. And they're saying that uh, quantitative easing has started again. But that's what the chart shows. But in reality, it's not what's happening. They opened up that lending facility. So banks are able to get, instead of looking at the value of their holdings, which are going down because of the uh, bonds that they hold, they're able to go in and get more money from the Fed. In other words, borrow more liquidity, and that makes that chart go up. So the $400 billion is not the central bank buying more bonds and more treasuries. The chart going up, and tell me if I'm wrong, Jason, but uh, – the chart going up shows that the banks are going in and saying, I need some help here, move it over. Now, they announced a plan that they were going to start buying mortgage-backed securities back at about $65 billion a month, but they've never gone above $45 billion. I did read that yesterday. So quantitative easing as far as the term of what that means and what that means for the Fed, we're not seeing that, but we're kind of splitting hairs because in reality, we kind of are. Um, you know, Jackie says, uh, uh, thanks for explaining that. I heard the same thing. It's a hard thing to explain, isn't it? Um, if I look at, I'm going to search on here and see if I can find the, uh, balance sheet in total assets here. And I don't think it's going to show me what I want to see. And, uh, now this, this is not the chart that I'm looking for here. It, it kind of shows flatline in reality. That's not what we're seeing. So, it's something to watch. I mean, tell me in the comments below uh, where you'd like to see uh, things shake out. Um, I think um, this may be good for you if you're selling. That's great. And I think you should take full advantage of it if you're thinking of putting your house on the market. Um, I like to say we know what we know and we don't know what we don't know. So um, I think that uh, um, that um, by June, I don't see this getting any slower. And we're going to be in deep trouble if that inventory number doesn't climb up. And by deep trouble, I mean massive bidding wars again. So if we hit this point where rates are, let's just say they're 5.25 and we only have 8,000 active listings, um, you better be prepared to fight for that house because here's what it's going to look like. So we're at 12,000 now. So if we get down where my little... X is right here. I'm going to go out to June and go right here like we did back in uh, 2020. It's uh, put your gloves on. We're going to be duking it out again. Yes, it's a loose meaning, exactly splitting hairs. But if Fed says we'll buy your mortgage-backed securities, banks are then safe to lend more at lower rates. Here we go. The big mess, the big bowl of soup. So we're going to keep tracking the numbers here. Remember, I my, my job here for me personally is to just let you know what's going on that you can see with today's numbers so that you don't have to rely on mainstream media. And I'm not beating up mainstream media. I'm just saying it's lagging. Right now, everybody's talking about January. Nobody's talking about the first week of April. Nobody. Turn on the television tonight. They're not going to say, Numbers are up for the first week of April because they don't know yet. Nobody's told them. Jay says, I'm seeing many people get 5%, 5 to 10% pay raises. That'll keep pressure on prices. It's amazing some of the pay raises that I've seen out there. 
So anyway, um, stay tuned here. Uh, we're just going to keep pushing this out and see what happens. Uh, I find it interesting. It's surprising for me. If you follow me at all, when rates went up to seven, I said, you can go back and look at the videos. I go, there went the spring market. I said, there it goes. Spring market's toast. Uh, rates are up too high. And it shows you how real estate can change quickly. But I am, I'm going to end with this. Real estate's a long-term game. So you can ride these ups and downs for years and come out fine. If you buy your house, stay put, fixed rate mortgage, don't even look at the numbers. Relax. You're fine. If you're out looking for a home now and you want to get an opportunity and you don't want to get priced out, then stay close to the numbers because you're trying to actively buy now. If you're trying to sell and get as much equity as you can right now, you need to be close to these numbers because you're making a financial decision on your future. A lot of baby boomers are trying to move to be closer to their kids and grandkids. So they're trying to make the right timing move. Most of them like to do that around summer, although I hate moving in June in Arizona. And uh, so I'd want to be out of my house with the moving truck by May. It's not fun moving furniture when it's 112. So, but in the long-term gain, real estate is long-term. Buy it, hold it, you're fine. Could you imagine buying a house in Phoenix in 1996 and staying there? You probably wouldn't have a mortgage and your house would be worth a lot despite the crash in 2008, muddling along until 2012, coming up now, seeing another spike, seeing it come down 17%. Now we're up five. You're more than fine. You can sit back and watch it with popcorn and you'd be in great shape. So that's kind of the boiled down method of the market right now. It'll be fun to watch. Stay tuned here. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure and subscribe to my newsletter. It comes out every morning at seven o'clock on Monday. And hey, I think by next week, we're going to hit 1 million views on this show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, everybody.